struggling. He slips down the, the side a little loose there, but Curtis Ohl's very elusive. 13-23 remaining in the game. 10-10 score. New Hampshire second and 10. Bob Jean, Banbury, 40-yard line, 35, and still on his feet and brought down at the 31. Curtis Old, Steve, with 54 receptions, a new season record. 12 receptions, 142 yards in this ball game. 12 and 142 yards, Curtis Olds. And Curtis Olds is an asset to a play like we just saw, the screen pass. They went back to the screen pass to Banbury, this time executed well, no holding, very close to a first down. Third and two. The pitch, Ryan, and he is brought down. Mike Ryan at the 29. That'll be very close to a first down. I think he may have gotten it. He spot the ball at the 29 and is a first down. So despite the penalties, UNH keeping the drive alive. 12 and a half left in the contest, 10-10 score. Mass went ahead in the first period. Palazzi, 11-yard run. Jim Reed's growing concerned now. His offense kind of lost their momentum, the defense being on the field for uh, fairly long periods of time. That's right. Now into the eye formation. Gene wants to throw, getting the chase. Pass is dropped, incomplete. I think it may have been touched by one of the defenders, but Urbana couldn't get there. That was Todd Rundle putting the pressure on. And the offensive tackle could have been called for a holding then as Rundle comes roaring in, puts the pressure on Gene, makes him throw the ball a little early. Bob Gene has had three 300-yard games. He's having one whale of an afternoon today. 10-10 score, second down and 10. Gene back into the pocket, quick drop. Now will roll a step, throws the bomb for Olds. Can he make this circus catch? No. Andrew Thomas, number 25, good coverage. Olds may be hurt. Uh-oh. He comes up limping. Now, good protection again. It breaks down a little bit on the left side of your screen. But Gene feels it, drifts over to his left, sees Oles down the sidelines. Very close there, you can see the right hand of Andrew Thomas knocks the ball away. Here's another angle, inside position by Thomas, but a well-thrown ball by Gene. Actually, Oles had both hands on it, but Thomas bats it away. Third and 10, big drop leg to Urbanic. he'll score. and the UNH coaches must have seen something because that, that play was wide open, Steve. Well, third and 10, they have a lot of faith in Todd Urbanic, and they did read something, Ken. There's a wide open hole. You can see Todd Urbanic was not touched, and what happened there is one of the inside uh, linemen, I believe it was the defensive end, took an inside charge. The guard just rode him down on the block, they kicked out to the outside, and Urbanic had a huge hole. The linebacker was not there. Eric Facey's extra point is good. And with 11.53 remaining in the ball game, UNH takes a 17-10 lead. So Todd Urbanic continues to sparkle here in the absence of Norman Ford, the outstanding running back who's lost for the season with a hairline fracture of the ankle. 31, Villanova, 28. Richmond 31 to 28 over Villanova in the third period. Caught that score off of the PA system. Todd Urbanic on the sideline celebrating with Bob Jean. What a day for Todd Urbanic. Just a tough character out there and <laughs> he's enjoying it. Good call by Bill Bowes and his staff. Urbanic has 80 yards on 18 carries. Well, Ken, I think you're exactly right that Wildcat 
team saw something that the UMass was doing on third and long. They took advantage of it. They got the lineman charging upfield. They wanted to get that pressure on Bob Jean. And the draw play to Urbanic executed perfectly. They caught one of the linemen on an inside loop charge, and it created a big gaping hole for Urbanic. The drive, 10 plays, 60 yards. 303 off the clock in the 28-yard run by Urbanic, and it's 17 to 10. And we're underway again. And Ted Barrett, 25-yard line on the return of the facey kickoff. And that's where UMass will start with 11.48 left in the ball game, and now trailing seven. In total yards, New Hampshire 398, UMass 281, and most of those on the ground for Mass, most through the air through for UNH. First downs, Wildcats 20, Mass with 15. A slot to the left side, let's see what transpires here. The Minutemen need to get the momentum back. Palazzi being chased, he finds the screen and Smelly, and he will be ridden down by Scott Curtis at the 21-yard line. Well, this, that's the inspiration, I guess, that the Cats needed. This play develops too slowly. The offensive linemen don't hold their blocks quite long enough. Now Palazzi waits too long. He doesn't get the ball to Smelly soon enough. Now watch Scott Curtis, number 92, blow by the offensive lineman. He's the real key here. Makes a tackle on Smelly for a loss. Another good afternoon for Scott Curtis, future pro. Palazzi fires the ball. It is caught by Jerome Kroom. Nice catch at the 42-yard line. So the 5'5", 150-pound junior comes up with a big catch. I thought Scott Curtis was going to get a hand on this ball, Ken. Watch, there's three defenders around the receiver right there. Jerome Kroom, number six. Nice throw by Dave Palazzi. And some breathing room out to the 42-yard line. Dimitri Yavis, the tight end, goes in motion. The play is a running play and not much going there as that swarming defense led by Basil Jaras, Chuck and Paul Belay, Bill O'Malley is there. No running room. And who else but Scott Curtis is also in on the play. Ooh, Connecticut 49 nothing over Rhode Island in the fourth quarter. We will be at UConn next week to see both the UNH Wildcats and the Connecticut Huskies. Alan Williams goes in motion. Palazzi will throw, and there's interference for you. At the 48-yard line, and Kroom is belted by Bill Farrell before the ball gets there. That'll cost him. Let's take another look. Now, he had Trafari wide open behind Kroom, but he decided to go to Kroom. There you can see, over the shoulder, number six, Bill Farrell, making contact before the ball arrived. Another angle from the end zone. Here's a good view. There you can see over the top, making contact, definitely interference. Jerome Kroom had major knee surgery two summers ago. Came in with one reception before this ball game. Penalty marker is out as the pitch comes back. And another defensive wrap up there by Scott Curtis. Allen Williams on the carry. But again, a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Well, this is usually a holding call, Ken, as uh, Dave Palazzi comes down the line. I'm sorry, illegal motion. Be a five-yard walk-off. Seemed like the flag was thrown as Palazzi was coming down the line on the option. The flag a little late. It did course, come uh, by the line judge. It <laughs> did seem like it was a late flag, right? <laughs> Jim Reed probably thankful it's only a five-yard <laughs> penalty rather than 15. So the five yards, and now it's first down and 15. Penalties, 24 yards on seven against Mass. Ten penalties called and 88 yards against UNH. And again, penalties coming at inopportune times for both ball clubs. 9.53 remaining in the ball game. Pete Montini, the center. Palazzi, the quarterback. Twin sets. Palazzi to throw. Pass is caught nicely on the sideline by Mike Trafari. 43-yard line. 
Now, this is a fine pass. Murray, the defensive end, is dropping out, trying to give Byrne help. Pelosi just lays the ball in there on a line. You can see Murray trying to close and get in that lane, but perfectly thrown by Pelosi. And a nice job by, by uh, Trafari to keep his feet in bounds. Perfectly shot by our cameraman on the sideline. That was a beauty. Now Pelosi rolls the option. This time he'll have to eat the football at the 42. Not much doing there. Pelosi, 11 for 15, 130 yards through the air. So the number is getting respectable. But most of the damage has been done on the ground by the Minutemen. Jaroschuk really uh, doing a nice job reading that quickly, getting across the line, coming towards Pelosi, really not giving him enough room to let that option play develop. He had nothing with the pitch man. The pitch man covered. Nice play. Basil Jaroschuk, number 53. Three of 12 in third down conversions for the Minutemen. They need one here. Allen Williams goes in motion. Third and four. Palazzi wings the ball and is caught, but a penalty marker is down and a holding call will be coming. And you see in disgust, Bill Butler on one knee, and the holding call will bring it all back. Well, penalty, the penalty again hurting. There you can see it's a takedown move by... <laughs> by Butler. That's hard to miss. I believe that was Boulay who had sneaked by him. Number 98. And he grabbed him. He was getting help from his tackle, but I don't think he realized he had that help from his teammate. There you see the and holding that's, call. That's going to negate a well-executed play. That's right. Pass and what would have been a first Murray. down. Yes. Down around the New Hampshire 30-yard line. So that's a costly penalty. Third down and 14. Kawazi into the pocket. Guns the ball for Kroom. He's hit as he catches the ball. No flag on the play. It looks like he may have the first down. Steve, I thought well, he was there hit was before contact. the ball got there. He definitely got hit before the ball got there. You've got a good eye, Ken. It was definitely there. I'm surprised the flags didn't uh, come down. Let's take a look at it here. The ball coming right at you. Right there. There, there's contact oh, absolutely. just before the ball arrives. That's Byrne, number 22, trying to break, break up the play. Now, they're going to measure for this. This should be a first down automatically. That was interference. Kroom on the sideline gets a hug from <laughs> one of the assistants. They'll be a little short on this, kid. Well, that's tough. Fourth and inches, and you've got to go for it because 8.24 left in the ball game, and you're at the 38-yard line. It looked like uh, Byrne made contact with Kroom just a slight second before the ball arrived. Mass did convert its only fourth down attempt. This is number two of the ball game. Fourth and inches, handoff, fullback. He's got the first down at the 36-yard line. Well, that time, Ted Barrett just put his nose down and just kept the feet moving and got the first down. Now, here's a guy that shifted from tailback to fullback this year, put on the extra weight, going behind those guards in the center of Montini, keeps the legs driving, makes sure he gets that first down. That was Kevin Murphy, my mistake. Instead of Barrett, Kevin Murphy gets the tough yardage. First and ten. Big first down play. And now Palazzi with plenty of time looking for Jerome Kroom. And it's overthrown at the two-yard line. Kroom was double covered back there by Byrne and Jer Gary Jordan. Well, Burns with him step for step. Kroom with good speed. You see Palazzi, it's a throwback. He wants Kroom on the post pattern from the opposite side. You can see Byrne with good position there. He has the height advantage on Kroom as well. Kroom diving for the ball. Nice effort. Ball just overthrown. Well, <laughs> there's a quick jump. Someone he didn't, he didn't, didn't get the signals or uh, something bizarre happened That's, there. Uh, that was Nick Salmon. Right. Five-yard walk-off. I, I thought it was a slow-motion replay for a second. He stood up and just started walking toward the well, defense. Well, he's got uh, Paul Boulay across from him, Ken. And Maybe a little we've, dazed we've by now. We've seen how quick <laughs> Paul Boulay is. He wants to get the early jump. I'm 
Second down, and it looks like 15 yards to go. The scoreboard says 13, but it's a long one. Palazzi pumps. He looks. The ball is tipped up in the air. Nice defensive play. Pass was intended for Jay Doughty. Bill Farrell tapped it away. And a man is down injured on the field at the 43. As we get another look here from the end zone, Farrell gets in the passing lane. Palazzi's right on the mark, but look how high Farrell gets. Remember, Farrell is a, a old wide receiver playing that position last year. He can leap for that ball, that time getting up, getting a hand on the ball. One of the minute men is I down. I believe that. Is that Barrett, the tackle? Number Mike, 70? Mike Barrett. Mike, an Amherst product, 6'5", senior. He is in pain now as they're checking his knee. Jim Reed on the sideline. He's seen a number of his players go down with injuries this year. That whole offensive line today has done such a good job, Ken. We've talked about the guards and centers, but the tackle's doing a great job as well. Nick Salmon we talked about that going against Paul Belay today, and Barrett, of course, doing a great job on the other side of the line. And Barrett is still down and still seems to be in a lot of pain. Well, that's the way the year goes, right, Steve? Uh, you experienced it with the Patriots. When you're not winning ball games, it seems like the injuries are much more severe and much more frequent. This UMass team has been so close in many games this year, unable to come up with a big play, penalties, mistakes, hurting them really responsible for that two and seven record they have. And really hurting them today, Ken, uh, turnovers, the fumble after the long pass in the third quarter, fumble, uh, penalties at various times in crucial situations. They're actually beating themselves today. Paul Connor is the backup to Barrett's. Connor, 6'4", 265 pound sophomore, and you see Barrett being put on the bench. I hope it's not serious. Second down. They get third down. Third down and 15. Alazi rolls right as play of room to operate, and he'll launch the bomb. He's got Trafari. It's intercepted by Ryan at the... Ryan Jones gets it. 20-yard line here, and now down at the 19. Ryan Jones played it beautifully, and the freshman comes up with another big play. Now there's a penalty afterwards. And we may see 15 tacked onto that return. But Ryan Jones responding well here, reading Palazzi. Now the mistake Trafari, the receiver, makes is he doesn't come back towards the ball. Watch him. He waits on the ball. That allows Jones the time to react, cut in front of him, make a nice interception, and get a good return as he cuts across field here, picking up blocks from his teammates. There's one. Now right here, Montini, the center, comes in, makes the tackle, along with Butler. And then there was some extra extracurricular activity after this and flags all over the field. I think it's going to be offsetting personal fouls, Ken. Every official threw his flag on that one. There are five yellow flags <laughs> within five yards. Personal foul against both ball clubs. Ryan Jones on the return, and Gary Jordan was shaken up on the play, and he was slow getting off for the Wildcats. Bob Jean comes running out. Now the official goes over to explain something to the sideline. There's Jones. Ryan Jones, the freshman. What a day he's had. <laughs> He'll remember this one for a while. <laughs> Played it beautifully and picked that baby off. Big play in a timely fashion. And the official's still talking about... Uh, I suppose all that uh, activity that was going on after the play, Ken. Should be offsetting penalties, and now I guess they've got it all figured out. Massachusetts, well, 325 yards total offense, 194 rushing. New Hampshire's got over 400 yards total offense, 322 in the air. Well, there's plenty of time left. The UMass Minutemen need to turn that ball back over their offense with good field position, not allow New Hampshire to get out of the hole here. Urbanic and Banbury in the backfield. Bob Jean hands off to Urbanic, tries the middle. He is greeted helmet to helmet at the 24-yard line. 
Andrew Thomas makes the stop well, on the it. Wildcats elect to come right at him up the middle. Good movement off the line of scrimmage here. The handoff to Urbanic behind his guards and center. Good five yard pickup. And if they can continue to do that, they'll waste that clock. 7.05 left in the game. Second and five. Manic moving directly behind Gene and now goes in motion. Bob will throw the ball as he has all afternoon. Pump fakes a couple of times and be ridden to the ground by Steve Robar. Good play by Steve who's fired up about it all. He stayed right with him. That's a big play. Bob Gene wishes now he had gotten rid of that ball to avoid the sack. They were at a second and five, and they ended up with about a third and eight. See, Robar, he stuck with it, fighting against the All-American tackle. Driscoll fights him off, sacks Gene, and creates a third and nine. Gene goes into the shotgun. Slot to the right side. He flugs the zone with receivers and has Curtis Olds, who makes the diving grab at the 37-yard line. Another great play by Curtis Olds. What UMass, an afternoon. 13 catches for this guy. UMass in a deep zone drop. Gene just waits for Curtis to clear the linebacker, puts it just beyond a diving George Corrales. Curtis Olds with a great catch, also diving for the ball. That's a big play, enabling the Wildcats to hold on to the ball. This now surpasses his season high. He has 157 yards through the air. Previous high, 142 against BU. Here's the pitch to Mike Ryan. 44-yard line. And he ties the single game rushing record. This is toss, student body right. You're going to see a big pile here. Good block on Todd Rundle by the tackle. And you can see Ryan gets upfield around the corner for an eight-yard gain. But a nice block there by the right tackle, Ken, for the Wildcats. Again, Curtis Olds tying the single game receiving record. And Todd Urbanic comes over the 50, and he is met by the clothesline at the 46-yard line. Where did they say he stepped out at the 47? Jim Bertucci. What's the right side of the line? Fire off. The tackle seals inside. The end, tight end seals the outside on Rundle. Gives Urbanic the lane. Enough for the first down. That tackle I talked about two previous plays ago with that, I didn't get the number. I didn't realize I was talking about the All-American number 63, John Driscoll. Urbanic, 94 yards on 20 carries. Big afternoon for Todd. And Banbury up the middle. Look at this, big running room. 34-yard line. Now Matt Banbury knocks off a big chunk. Jim Bertucci makes the stop, but not before he has another first. Now the Wildcat offensive line is really getting it together. Watch him push everybody out of the middle. Perone, too late. Banbury making one man miss. Bertucci makes the tackle, but another first down for the Wildcats. 34-yard line, 438 remaining in the contest. New Hampshire leading 17 to 10. Trying to add to that. Of course, the Miniman desperately want to get the ball back. Pitch to Urbanic. He is greeted at the line on the left side and has two yards at the most. Big days for Bob Jean, Curtis Olds, and Todd Urbanic. And in the second half, UNH has gotten the ground game together, Steve, as you thought they would have to. 93 yards to 16 in that first half. Well, they've turned it around, and of course, if they can run the ball the way they're running it on this drive, it makes their passing game that much more effective. And this is one of the things that Coach Jim Reed feared the most from New Hampshire is their passing game. Second down, nine. 348, clock rolling. And off for Bannock, trucked up behind the line, and he gets to the 34, the previous line of scrimmage. Joe Cullen, a nice defensive play. That brings up a third and nine. Well, the running game beginning to work here in the second half. The passing game has been working the entire game. Bob Jean has come off an ankle injury at the end of the first half. 
So New Hampshire has done what it had to do. 313 left in the ball game. Look for Chris Braun at the top of your screen. Four for 12 in conversions. This one doesn't work either. Olds cannot get to the football. Well, it looked like he might have Braun in a one-on-one -on -one situation on the far side, but he elects to go to Olds inside. The ball overthrown just a little. He was open. Actually, more than a little overthrown. Olds could only get one hand on it. The Wildcats are going to have to punt the ball away, but they ate up over four minutes of that clock. Baldessaro to punt it away. He has five punts for almost 40 yards on the average. This one he aims for the corner, but it will stay definitely in bounds. But it's down by his teammate and a nice play. That's Scott Curtis. A 30-yard punt. Todd Urbanic had the 28-yard touchdown run with 11.53 remaining. That made it 17 to 10. It was a 10-10 halftime score, and Jim Reed's troops now have got to get it together in two minutes and 59 seconds, Steve. Well, we go back to that statistic you pointed out in the beginning, Ken, the fourth quarter scoring. UMass outscored in the fourth quarter for their opponents 82 to 67, and they're having a problem getting it going here late in the fourth quarter. Tim Bryant, the new quarterback, and they're replacing Palazzi. Bryant had started several games in the game we saw at UMass several weeks ago. He and Palazzi alternated. Now Bryant, his first possession of the afternoon. And he keeps, and Bill O'Malley stops him after a pickup of a couple of yards. Bryant comes into the ball game with 17 of 42 passes for 182 yards and one touchdown. Palazzi leaves with 12 of 18, 142 yards and one interception. Well, Bryant. Tim Reed probably going with Tim Bryant. He probably feels he's a little better passer than Dave Palazzi, where Dave Palazzi is a better runner than Bryant. Bryant, a fifth string walk on. Lofts the ball. Mike Trafari. This time he has it at the 35 yard line. And Bryant laid it right there. Trafari had found the seam. A well thrown open. ball. The Wildcats dropping back into a deep, deep zone. Trafari had a lot of open territory in the middle of the field. As you can see, he throws over the linebacker, Curtis, in the seam. Jordan closes, trips him up. And Heap, number 66, finishes him off. But that's a big gain out to the New Hampshire 35-yard line. Or excuse me, UMass 35-yard line. Bryant on first down. Chip Mitchell goes in motion. Bryant to throw over the middle. The pass is caught. And down at the 41-yard line. David Mitchell. This is a good call. The delay by Mitchell, he blocks, gets a little block. Now he slips out, he's the outlet. The ball thrown to him, but Jaroschuk, number 53, read it from the right defensive end position. He was uh, covering the back of the release. Nice job by Jaroschuk. 130 remaining in the ball game. Mass is driving. Pass to the right side, and they have the first down. Pass is caught over there That's by Williams. Alan Williams. They get Williams into the pattern. He's a reserve tailback. Bryant with a nice throw puts it on the money before Jones number three can close and they've got the first down. One minute and 19 seconds left in the game. Mass trailing by seven. Tim Bryant leading the charges now on first and ten. In the pocket again. Trafari is there. He has the ball at the 30 yard line. Another first down, and Bryant is marching them right down the field. Farrell and Jordan defending. All right. Again, a lot of room in the middle. Bryant finds Trafari. You can see him crossing your screen there. He's got a lot of room. Look how deep the safety is. Jordan and Farrell, number six, they close. It's much too late. UMass threatening now on the New Hampshire 30-yard line. Trafari making up for the fumble at the one-yard line when he caught the long bomb and then fumbled the ball, coughed it up, and cost UMass a touchdown. He now has five catches, 128 yards. We invite you to join Fred Cusick and Derek Sanderson for tape-delayed coverage of the Tucker Anthony Golf Classic from the Holly Ridge Country Club in Sandwich, Mass. Sunday's action fits a team from the Lexington Country Club against a team from the Framingham Country Club. Play begins Sunday night at 7, only on your New England Sports Network.
17 to 10, Massachusetts has the lead, but boy, Tim Bryant has sparked this team. Well, Tim Bryant uh, throwing the ball exceptionally well, and uh, we know the, the story on Tim Bryant covering these Yankee Conference games last year. We did several UMass games. He's a tough Tim character. Tim Bryant yeah. always makes the ball game exciting. And he's been injured much of the season, Steve. He had injured ribs and ankle against Maine. He was hit in the ribs with a helmet. Two timeouts apiece. Bryant, four for four, 61 yards. Has not missed a pass so far. Can he do it in a minute six? From the 30-yard line. Good protection. Ball batted down. Basil Jaroschuk, big defensive play. Well, they leave Jaroschuk uncovered. Someone makes a mistake here. Now the back, the left back releases. Drostruck delayed, then comes in. You can see him there getting up and, and batting the ball away. Bryant wanted to hit that back who was slipping out to the left side. Basil Jaroschuk, his brother playing with the St. Louis Cardinals in the NFL, was his teammate last year. 17-10. Trafari goes in motion. Tim Bryant rolls out. He'll keep the football. 25 down to the 20 and dives to the 22. He has another first down. Now this should I beg your pardon, the it's the 17-yard line, the 17. Well, this should stop the clock. He rolls out, and of course, the Wildcats concerned about the pass. He has two backs leading him. Now he tells Williams, go. He takes off, gets a block right there, gives him enough time to get up inside for the first down. And Bryant stops the clock with an incomplete pass. Flips it out to Jay Dowdy. And the clock stops, and there's Jim Reed on the sideline. Well, his team has come so close so many times this season. Can they pull it off this time? 45 seconds left in the ball game. 17-10. Mass knocking on the door, trailing seven. Ball is on the 17-yard line. It's been a whale of a football game. Really enjoyable with a lot of fireworks. See if the Cats defense can respond to the challenge one more time. Trafari in motion. Bryant rolls, looking. It is intercepted at the 10-yard line by Ryan Jones. He picks off his second of the ball game. The freshman with his second pick play, ending another UMass threat. This is great reaction. Trafari in motion. Right here, cuts it up. Now look how quickly Jones reads it. Cuts in front of him, picks it off in the air. Great effort. Number three, Ryan Jones. Here's another effort. This will be another angle, excuse me. Right in front of the intended receiver, Trafari. Takes it right away from him. That's the game winning play right there. Absolutely. Ryan Jones. That's it, Ryan Jones. Two big interceptions, killing two drives in the fourth quarter. And the freshman yeah, makes yeah. his mark in this ball game. UMass calls timeout with 36 seconds left. And there's Ryan on the sideline. Boy, he's going to have plenty to talk about over dinner tonight, isn't he? He's going to celebrate tonight. This is a big game for Ryan Jones. Now, Tim Bryant rolling out there. You notice number six, Bill Farrell, is in the vicinity, Ken. I think he was actually blocking the view that Tim Bryant had. I don't think he could see Ryan Jones, number three, in the coverage. And Jones read it perfectly, cutting in front of Trafari, diving for the interception. That said an awful lot, didn't it, when you saw Jim Reed get a hug from Bertucci on the sideline. Coach, close again, but no cigar. But I think Reed's a pretty popular coach among these players. Well, it's been a very frustrating year for that team. And Jim Reed's always positive. And I, I think his players appreciate that. They recognize it. And that was a good gesture there by his player, Bertucci. Right. Well, 36 seconds left of this one. It looks like UNH has a chance to go into Connecticut next week with that at-large berth still staring them in the face mask. Gene puts his knee down, and now UMass takes its last time out and 29 seconds remaining in this ball game. Well, it's been a gorgeous day for a football game here. The sunshine, the clouds broke just before game time. Now the sun beginning to set over those New Hampshire mountains. 
and a breeze chilling things off here, but it's been an afternoon that Bob Jean, Curtis Oles, Todd Urbanek, and Mike Ryan will all long remember. Nesson's coverage of New England College Soccer continues with the match of the year. It's the NCAA New England One Championship. This Monday, Harvard, ranked number one in New England, meets the University of Connecticut Huskies, ranked number two. We invite you to join Scott Gray and Gary Swanson for this big one. That's the NCAA New England Championship game Monday. Tape delayed coverage beginning at 8 o'clock right here on Nesson. Steve and I will be at Connecticut next week in stores. And a good one in store for us there. One o'clock is the kickoff. Third down, and this should be the final play of the ball game. Gene will sit on it, and UMass cannot stop the clock again. And this one will run out. Steve, a good ball game all the way around, and anytime you go to the uh, fourth quarter and you have two marches down to the end zone and have a chance to win, I guess that's all you can ask for. Well, UMass playing extremely well today against a very good Wildcat team. Penalties and turnovers victimizing them, but uh, they have nothing to be ashamed of. A great effort by the Minutemen. And the Minutemen are losing for the eighth time this season. There you see Bill Bowes and Jim Reed exchanging. And the final score, New Hampshire 17 to 10 over the Minutemen. Bob Jean, 29 of 43, 343 yards. Records for a career yardage, completion, touchdowns, and completions in a game and the most valuable player in the Bill Knight Trophy. Bill, the former sports information director here at New Hampshire. Once again, the final score from Durham. 17-10, New Hampshire wins it. Yankee Conference Football 87, brought to you in part by Bush. The beer with a taste as smooth as its name. Nesson's coverage of New England College Soccer continues Monday with the Division I NCAA New England Region Championship game. The Harvard Crimson will be meeting the University of Connecticut Huskies from Connecticut Soccer Stadium. Join Scott Gray and Gary Swanson for all the action with tape delayed coverage beginning Monday night at 8 o'clock. That's the New England NCAA Championships Monday at 8 right here on Nesson. And Nesson closes out its Yankee Conference Football 87. Next Saturday, the University of New Hampshire Wildcats face the University of Connecticut Huskies live at 1 o'clock. That's UNH and UConn next Saturday right here on Nesson. The executive producer of New England College Sports on Nesson is Bob Whitelaw. Today's game, produced and directed by Don Larry. Our coordinating producer, John Vassallo. Our graphic coordinator, Tom McNeely. And our associate director is Mike Wollert. Now for Steve King, this is Ken Bell saying so long from Cal Stadium, Durham, New Hampshire. Yankee Conference Football 87 has been a presentation of Nesson, your New England sports network.